Today we are going to talk about correct way of eating carbs to stop glucose spikes and insulin resistance. Now, sugar is, as you know, one of the worst things you can consume if you are trying to maintain a healthy weight or prevent diabetes or treat diabetes and prevent some chronic diseases, right? But as you know, not all the carbs are created equal. In fact, there are some types of carbs that can actually be really good for you, even if you have diabetes or insulin resistance. Now, if you are a carnivore who loves nothing more than a nice juicy steak, this video isn't for you. In fact, you can exit right now and go back to chewing down on that burger without a care in the world. For those who are open to learn, let's get started. There are three primary food sources carbohydrate protein and fat containing foods right most of the time it is mixed each gram of protein or carbohydrate contains four calories while each gram of fat contains nine calories now as you know in the united states at least our country's population consumes far too much food Popular carbohydrates are the root cause and the cause of obesity and diabetes. Now, foods that have been refined, such as breads and cakes and cereals and muffins and donuts and da 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 da, they're on the menu everywhere. In order to convert those carbohydrates, what does our body do? Well, we convert all those carbs into glucose so we can absorb from our intestinal system. Now, what happens when that, when that happens is that insulin levels will inevitably go up in an effort to get the glucose into the cells. That is, if you're lucky enough to still have enough insulin to get that done. By the time you have diabetes, you lose 50% to 60% of insulin production capacity. On top of that, you're more than likely already have more insulin resistance than anyone else, creating a bigger problem by preventing the body's cells. Now, your glucose levels will rise as a result of high glycemic index foods such as bread, potato, rice, pasta, that will result in significant rise in your blood sugar. Now, glycemic index for distinguishing carbohydrates with a slower release of energy from those with faster release of energy, right? So that is a very important concept to understand. High glycemic index carbs should be avoided at all costs. The lower the number, the greater the stability. The lower the glycemic index, the less impact food has on your blood sugar. Uh, we want it to be 55 or less. If it is less than 40, it's great. Uh, again, the medium is 55 to 69. A score of 70 is really considered high. Now, I have a trick to help you figure out which foods are going to be included in those that are on the good glycemic index, right? So it's hard to know sometimes what you're eating. But when you look at the labels, the amount of protein and fiber should be greater than the amount of carbohydrates and sugars. So if that's the case, you're in good shape. In most cases, lower glycemic index can be achieved also with natural fats such as olive oil. You can add olive oil to something and suddenly the glycemic index will go down. So add olive oil to anything you see fit. The foods that will make the aging process more gradual is olive oil also will make the aging process more gradual and it's going to slow down the absorption of those foods that are probably higher glycemic index to begin with but it'll be lower now with the olive oil again olive oil is the king of oils to achieve a low glycemic index and it works as an anti-aging with the substances in itself if you consume a low-fat meal it will really raise the level of glucose in the blood way more quickly for example try cereal and milk in the morning especially low-fat milk and see how quickly your blood sugar will spike. Eat the same amount of carb that comes in the cereal, let's say 60 grams of carbs, as an apple, like a large apple and peanut butter, and you can see the difference yourself. Just check your blood sugar in one hour after each of these breakfasts, for example, and you can see the difference. Although you are eating the same amount of carbs, at one hour, your blood sugar will be so much different. In addition to high fat, fat meals with olive oil, eating fiber will also slow down the conversion of carbs to glucose, which is the case for apple for example. Most people know that they should be eating more fiber, but they often don't know what exactly fiber is or 
why it is so important. There are two types of fiber. One is soluble, the other is insoluble. But they are both beneficial in their own ways. Soluble fiber dissolves in water and forms like a gel-like substance, while the insoluble fiber doesn't dissolve and helps add bulk to your stool. Both types of fiber are essential for maintaining a healthy digestive system. Now, what are the sources of soluble fiber? Well, that would be your oats, barley, legumes, and some fruits and vegetables, of course, in moderation. Insoluble fiber is found in some whole grains that are not processed, uh, nuts, seeds, and vegetables. One of the benefits of soluble fiber is that it really slows down the digestion and it helps to regulate the blood sugar levels, unless you eat a lot of it. This is important for people with diabetes who are trying to lose weight and control their diabetes at the same time. Now, in addition, insoluble fiber helps to keep your digestive system running smoothly by adding bulk to the stool and promoting the regularity. As you can see, there are many benefits to getting more fiber in your diet. So next time you're at the grocery store, be sure to stock up on these high fiber foods that we discussed. How about heart health related to glucose spikes? Did you think about that? When most people think of heart health, they automatically think of things like exercising and eating low fat foods and stuff like that. However, there's actually another factor that can have a significant impact on your cardiovascular health, which is your risk of heart attacks or strokes. And yes, that is blood sugar levels. What happens when blood sugar spikes is that it damages the lining of your arteries, leading to inflammation and an increased risk of heart disease. That's where the low glycemic index foods come in. By stabilizing blood sugar levels, preventing spikes, they can actually help to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. In addition, low glycemic index foods are often high in fiber to begin with, which helps promote a healthy digestive system. And since the digestive system is closely connected to heart and eating fiber rich foods can also help to keep your heart healthy, so you have to account for all that they're all connected so guys if you are looking for ways to improve your cardiovascular health which most diabetics die from cardiovascular problems be sure to add some low glycemic index foods to your diet now you know what to do with those healthy carbs that used to spike your blood sugar right now you know more fiber more uh, healthy natural fats will help that and guess what we are at the end of this video it was a quick end but if you like this video please share give a thumbs up and say something Write a comment. I will see you in the next video.